I am Shamima Khatun, Assistant Teacher English, APBN Public School and College, Bugra. Our uh, a heartfelt gratitude to you to our online class in APBN Public School and College. Our today's lesson is close. We will discuss about close, its classifications and identification of close in our today's class. Okay, let's start. Our today's lesson is close. All of you know that. Okay. At first, at first we will know what is close and what are the functions of close. Achha, what is close? A close is a part of sentence and a close is a part of sentence and that must have a subject and a predicate. And in predicate, a subject and a finite verb must have exist. And the, uh, I am writing now, you are following me. A close is a part of a sentence, sentence, in another words we can say having a subject and a predicate. Okay, then a clause is a part of a sentence having a subject and a predicate. And there is a question here that in predicate, there must have a finite verb. There must have a finite verb. In a clause, a subject must have exist and also a predicate. But in predicate, there must have a finite verb. Because without finite verb, clause is not occurred. Okay. Then we will learn the classification of clauses. Classifications. At first, clauses are three types. Clauses are three types. The first type is principal clause. Principal clause, you may also call it independent clause or main clause. The another name of principal clause is are independent clause or main clause. The next one is subordinate clause. And the third classification is coordinate clause. Okay, at first we know the definition of clause and what uh, what it, the structure of clause and then classification. Clauses are three types. Generally, uh, the first the first classes is principal clause, second subordinate clause, and the third one is coordinate clause. And we uh, uh, now we will learn what is principal clause, subordinate clause, and coordinate clause. At first we, uh, we will start with principal clause. Uh, what is principal clause? Okay, principal means main, and the another name of this clause is independent clause. So we can say that the clause which can be used independently and gives its meaning clearly or freely that does not depend on another clause that is called principal clause or main clause. Oh, I will write only the basic or key words of the definition of the clause you will understand clearly. The characteristic of principal clause is independent. Independently, principal clause expresses the meaning independently 
and in another words we can call freely freely and independently the clause uh, i repeat the clause that expresses its meaning independently or freely and that does not depend on another clauses that is called principal clause and now subordinate clause the another name of subordinate clause is dependent all of you know that dependent means rely on that means depend dependent clause uh, now we can call the definition that the clause that is dependent on principal clause in expressing its meaning the clause that needs to depends principal clause in expressing its meaning that is called subordinate clause the main characteristic or main keywords of subordinate clause is dependent dependent the subordinate clause is dependent in whose clause is it dependent to principal clause to express the meaning clearly or concisely subordinate clause has to dependent on principal clause okay then we can define coordinate clause and what is coordinate clause coordinate clause also depend on principal clause with coordinating conjunction with coordinating conjunction the main characteristic of coordinate clause is coordinating conjunction coordinating conjunction and this uh, that is the question that what is the coordinating conjunctions coordinating con conjunction means to add to connect all of you know that coordinating conjunctions are and or but yet moreover not only not only but also these are the coordinating conjunctions that depends on principal clause to express its meaning by using these coordinating conjunctions now we have to learn a lesson to understand the clause clearly that is subordinating conjunctions because in subordinate clause we have to learn subordinating conjunctions without learning these conjunctions we will not able to find out to identify subordinate clauses so the subordinating conjunctions are such as okay i am writing in the over on the over you will notice it subordinating conjunctions subordinating conjunctions subordinating conjunctions are when which how where since as before till until wherever wherever etc there are many other also many other subordinate subordinate clauses but i only refer here only a few in with the with our lesson with the passage of our lesson i will inform you all of the subordinate clauses okay Uh, then we learn the classification of clauses principal clauses subordinate clause and coordinate clause we also understand the mm, mm, definition of the clauses then we will learn about the sub classification of these clauses subordinate clauses are three types subordinate clause subordinate clause subordinate clauses are three types 
These are mainly the basic classifications of clauses. Subordinate clauses are three types. The three types are at first noun clause, then adjective clause and the third is adverbial clause. At first subordinate clauses has three types. The first type is noun clause. noun clause, then adjective clause, adjective clause and the third one is adverbial clause. And the third one is adverbial clause. We will learn turn by turn. Okay. Then our first concern is noun clause. What is noun clause and what are the functions of a noun clause? Okay, at first I will teach you that, uh, we will learn that noun clause. In parts of speech, what functions a noun does in a sentence, noun clause does the same. Uh, noun clause does five functions in a sentence. I will show you that what are the types. Uh, in that types uh, in which way noun clause can be used in a simple sentence. Okay, noun clause. The functions that noun clause performs in a complex sentence, noun clause does the function of a noun. Noun is a naming word, we know that in parts of speech we have learned that noun is a naming word and the noun is performed in five ways in a sentence. Noun clause is also perform five ways or five uh, or na noun clause is also can be used in a sentence in five ways. The first way is noun clause can be a subject of a simple sentence. We will know that that uh, let's look at in my example that Bangladesh is poor. Known to all. That Bangladesh is poor is known to all. That Bangladesh is poor in that portion of the sentence is a noun clause. Why? As a subject. As a subject. Noun clause can be used in a complex sentence as a subject. That Bangladesh is poor is known to all. Uh, the poor, from, uh, in the poor and from the beginning and the poor at the portion that Bangladesh is poor is noun close because this portion of the sentence is used as a subject. Secondly, we will learn as an object. Noun close can be used, also can be used as an object in a complex sentence. The example is I know what he says, what he says, I is a subject here and no is a transitive verb here, transitive verb and what he says is at the same time it is a noun clause and it works as an object. What he says, what he says that that portion of the sentence works as an object of a transitive verb and so it is called noun clause. Noun clause can be used both as a subject and as an object of a complex sentence. And there is another, another three types of uses that is noun clause can be used also as complement. We can talk that as a complement, 
as a complement. Noun clause is used as a complement. How? We will let's see the example. The question is what he responds. What he responds. The question is a subject and is is also bar verb. But what type of verb is it? Is is a verb of linking verb. All of you know that. All the be verbs that is am is are was were be be being. These verbs are used as a linking verb. In this sentence, is is a linking verb. The question is our subject is linking verb and what he says is a complement. Complement and at the same time is a noun clause because noun clause can be used as complements. Okay, and uh, in sentence pattern or structure, we will know that or we know that you will also learn that after linking verb, complement is used, always complement is used. Be verb, besides be verb, there are many other linking verbs. In, in my another class, I will teach you about linking verb and many other verbs. Then we will discuss about noun clause, the uses and functions of noun clause. In the third, we will learn noun clause used as a complement and in fourth, we will learn that noun clause is used as an appositive, as an appositive. How noun clause functions as an appositive, we will learn that through the example. Let's have a look on my example. As an appositive, the news that Dr. Yunus got Nobel Prize. is true. In this sentence, that portion of the sentences is noun clause and is used as an appositive. Now, how we will understand that that portion is an appositive? Okay, I will discuss that. Uh, the news appositive is always confined with comma. Okay, appositive always starts with a comma and ends, we also ends with a comma. In appositive in this sentence and there is another characteristics of appositive that is, appositive means appositive gives more information about subject. Our in the sentences, in the sentence our subject is the news. Okay, and the news, what is the news? That portion of the sentence, the news that Dr. Muhammad Yuno, Dr. Yunus got Nobel Prize. That is the news and that is the extra information of our subject. Appositive always uh, gives extra information or more information about subject. That is the characteristics of appositive and it is an example of noun clause. Because noun clause is used as an appositive. This is an, uh, the uh, as an appositive is another name that is case in apposition. We can call it, we can call it case in apposition, case in apposition. And the fifth and final functions of noun clause that is object of a preposition object of a preposition. Noun clause can be used as an object of a preposition. All of you know about object. What is object? All of you know that. All of you know that. And preposition. Object of a preposition in the sentence that we cannot agree to, we cannot agree to 
what you propose what you propose in the sentence what you propose is a person that works as a object as an object of the preposition because the person is placed after the preposition to is a preposition all of you know that and the next person is what you propose this is noun clause and it's the use of object of a preposition noun clause does the five functions and i will teach you all the five functions today in my next class i will taught you the other classifications of other clauses okay thanks to all you i hope all of you stay happy and stay home thank you